Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Today is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022, and I'm doing this episode back to back, mind you. Mind you, I'm doing these back to back because I want to start knocking these bitches out. I have identified this this need for content that doesn't exist or this perceived need, right? Because it, it could still fucking flop, right? I don't know how many uh, how many viewers this might get, but I don't see a lot of this type of career advice taking place. And I know public schooling definitely, definitely is not providing the kind of counseling, the kind of guidance that young students need. So whether it be young or old, any aspiring professionals are in need of career guidance, of professional counseling, hit me up, man. My name is Alex. I'm a corporate cowboy powered by Incorporating Associates, mind you. So if you would want to reach out, maybe want to be a Patreon, maybe want to be a patron, you can subscribe to the Patreon. You can uh, shoot us a donation. Keep this operation non-for-profit, right? But if you want to access us directly for a consultation on your own, something personalized, something private, face-to-face, digitally, right? I mean, it could be face-to-face, but given costs for travel and all that, it might be best to do something like Zoom. Um, if you want professional rates though, yeah, hit us up, hit us up. We're on the market, but I want to start knocking these out pretty much back to freaking back. And on the previous episode, we asked, is there an optimal way to explain long-term underemployment or unemployment? And I will link that video in the description somewhere. I'll try to link it in the description somewhere. So now going on ahead to today's topic, it's going to be this one created 13 hours ago, it says. It asks, and I suppose uh, the subreddit wants their location because that is a good question to ask. Shit, they want to know locations too. Like where, right? So the question is here is, happily employed, got a job offer for almost 60% increase of wage. Should I take it? Looking for some advice. Looking for some advice. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to shoot it out for free. If they're willing to put their information out here for all of us to see, well, then based on just these facts alone, should they take it? Well, let me let me, let me me give my two cents. As a corporate cowboy, I'm out here trying to create leaders. I'm trying to inspire aspiring professionals to become leaders, to become corporate cowboys in their own right, okay? And that's to put them on the same level as their employer, to put them on the same level or better as their manager, to put them on the same level or better as the corporation itself. Corporate fucking cowboy. I'm a 26-year-old engineer currently working as an account manager for a medium-sized family-owned company in chemicals based in Northwest Europe. Northwest Europe. I have a very supportive and trusting sales director, good colleagues, and a nice work-life balance, and I generally like the markets we sell products for. Recently, I have been approached by a recruiter of a Fortune 500 company based in Europe, also for a role as account manager, but with greater responsibilities. The pay is substantially higher, plus 50 to 60 percent. So 50 to 60 percent higher, it says, which I can really use for my mortgage payments. The job and the market itself really interests me. It's within a growing business, within a growing business segment. And I feel like it could be a real game changer for my career. Both the sales manager, HR, and the potential colleagues seem to be seem to pre, seem to be pretty seem to be pretty positive about my application. Seem to be pretty receptive, I want to say receptive about my application. Seem to be seem to be pretty positive about my applying, right? So that's what I'm taking at the sales manager. The, for the recruiting firm, the sales manager, the HR and potential colleagues seem to be pretty positive about my application, but I feel like the atmosphere is more distant and a bit cold and also a bit more professional. This, this last sentence here in this paragraph, again, because I, I don't have, I don't have the person in front of me to ask follow-up questions, right? But I feel like could be construed as both, as, as both coming from the recruiting firm 
and coming from the separation firm, from the separating firm. So maybe the sales manager, HR, and potential colleagues at their current firm is like pretty positive about their applying. Like, yeah, go apply. It sounds like a great opportunity. And then uh, the, the recruiting firm might also be pretty positive about their applying. Like, yeah, we can't wait to have you on board. You would be a great addition to the team. Um, I, I suppose I could see them both. But then this this last clause right here, but I feel the atmosphere is more distant and a bit cold and also a bit more professional. What the fuck do you expect? And again, it can be construed as both sides. What do you expect from a Fortune 500 company to just run on like a fucking, to, to, to just run like at a, in a haphazard fashion Everybody just stumbling over one another like the shit ain't going to be. Yeah, it's going to be more more cold, more calculating. It's going to be more 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 stringent. It's going to be more more mercurial, right? I mean, working for even working for a family owned, even working for a medium sized family owned company, it, it, it's going to require some kind of uh, rigorous structuring, some hierarchical organization for you to abide by. But a Fortune 500 Fam, they've got systems, plural, systems in place to be sure nobody steps out of bounds. And they've got a lot of compliance to be fucking with. So they've got to comply with a lot of laws. They want to be sure that they're dotting their I's and crossing their T's. Unless you're like a higher up executive getting away with murder, baby, you are not getting away with murder. You feel me? <laughs> so... So the, the, the atmosphere being more distant, more cold, more professional, yeah, I could see that in a Fortune 500. In a mid-sized family-owned company, uh, in, in the context of you having told them that you are applying, which is a fuck up, right? If you told them you're applying, if you told them you're interviewing or were offered this position, uh, I, I probably would have withheld that information until later in the game, later in the process, because now your sales manager, your HR, and your potential colleagues, they seem pretty positive. They seem, they appear positive about you applying to leave. But all of a sudden, the atmosphere is more distant. It's a bit cold and a bit more professional. So he's lost some personal clout in the company, and they've become much more fucking professional with him. So they're not, they're not giving him like the time of day. They're telling him the time of day as it pertains to his immediate position. They're not being like as nice to him anymore because they think they're not being as nice to them anymore, right? Because the 26 year old engineer, we're not told if it's male or female, but we're not, we're not being nice to you anymore after you told us you're thinking about leaving. So even if we are a family and at one point we considered you a part of our extended family in this corporation, in this company, right? If you tell us you're thinking about leaving, if you don't tell us why or if you don't tell us what could be done to keep you or if you don't approach us on some kind of initiative that could help you develop in conjunction, right, to, to help you develop along with the development of the company, right, to, to keep you on board as, it, as an integral part of the company, yeah, of course they're going to start cutting you out. Of course they're going to start edging you out, bumping you out little by little. You won't be as near and dear to them as, as you were a week ago when they didn't know that you were prospecting, uh, that you were going to moonlight for other companies, that, you were gonna, that you're prospecting leaving for another role. Now it says, I've worked for 1.7 years on my first job, which was awful. And now for one year at my current job, which I do like. Don't want to become a job hopper. Uh, what? <laughs> Final note, leaving my current job would create quite some trouble as we're seriously understaffed. It'd be almost like a knife in the back of my colleagues in the middle of a difficult period. Would love to hear some of your personal experiences or thoughts. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so then that that answers this question here. They're potential colleagues. He's talking about future prospective colleagues that they appear more cold and more personal. Yeah, fam, it's a fucking Fortune 500. 
<laughs> and and as far as like uh, it being understaffed, let, let's address this. Let, let, let's address, let us, let us address this reality of being a quote unquote job hopper. Them, them being located, they being located in Northwest Europe. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what the what the rule in the jurisdiction is, right? But as far as employment goes, if they are under contract, right, and it could be for a term, a term of years even. It could be anywhere from one to three to five to ten years. I, I've, I've rarely, very rarely seen something extending out past five, right? And, and, and that, that is, that's really saying something if an executive, if a corporate cowboy ties themselves down to one organization, to one entity, and this entity manages to, to really tie them up in like a non-compete, a non-disclosure. They, they, they can't like, it's just like a, like a sole commitment, a sole commitment to this one entity. Man, they got to be, be getting paid out. They must be getting paid out. Collecting all types of bags, collect, collecting all types of, of, uh, of auxiliary benefits, fucking expense accounts and whatnot. And, and that, that they, could be in, they could still be an independent contractor, that or an employee, right? And that should come with fringe benefits and, and, and all of that, ooh la la, right? Um, that being said, becoming a job hopper in today's day and age when independent contractors are like the fucking hot thing right now, don't be afraid of being a job hopper. Again, you ought to uh, really temper what I say with, one, a grain of salt, and two, what the rule is in your area because I'm speaking from you know a, a, an American point of view. But by and large, in business, in business, if the business isn't taking care of you, even if you do like your current job, right? If the business isn't taking care of you, if they're not actively developing you, this mid-size family-owned company, if it's mid-size already ought to have some systems in place for professional development of their personnel, right? Right? I mean, one would one would think to imagine, one would like to hope, one, one, would, one would like to think that that uh, any mid-sized firm, family owned or not, I mean, if you're mid-sized and you don't have a system in place of, of development and retention for talent, you're fucking up. You're really fucking up. Big time. Fucking up. So if you're, if you're a small fry, if you're a small fish out there and you don't have a system, you haven't thought about implementing a system, I would think about it. I would think about it. Yeah, that's right. We don't we don't just consult for the for the, the little people. We consult for the small fries and the little fish too. How about that? So, I mean, but that's more managerial consulting, and and that I mean that's those are different, way different rates. Uh, it says your final note: leaving my current job would create some trouble as we're seriously understaffed. How was that your trouble though? How was that your trouble though? Explain to me that. I mean. If, if you are talented, if you are a potential asset, the Fortune 500 company is the one who found that. The Fortune 500 company is the one who sought you out. They found you. They went out to seek you, to headhunt you. What, what, what troubles do you have to worry about at a, in, a, in a place where, you're, where you are seriously understaffed now? If anything, that to me validates the idea that this medium-sized Family owned company, and regardless of what industry they are in now, because I mean, that might have, that might have mattered beforehand if we didn't know. But now that we know, I mean, it's, it's like it never mattered because they, they already have a procedural fuck up. This is more substantive, right? Like what, what, what they're doing, like in the industry, what exactly are they, in, are they doing? But procedurally, if they aren't working to develop you as the company grows, right? Then that means that they themselves lack direction. They themselves lack guidance. They themselves are in need of professional consultation, managerial consult, business consultation. They should be hitting me up. They should be hitting the firm up, right? So, I mean, that's neither here nor there. The Fortune 500 having identified you tells me having, having sought you out and made you an offer, pitched you an offer for something substantially higher. 
I, I don't know if substantially higher uh, per the market rate in Northwest Europe or just 50% to 60% of what you're making, right? Because this, this mid-sized family-owned could have been paying you below market value for all you know. That matters. But even then, the fact that they, are, that the fact that they identified you, went out, sought you out, interviewed you, recruited your ass for more money, I have to tell you where you should go, really. Now, the, the only, the only, the only reason I think, maybe the only point of contention, and this is if you really wanted to like draw it out, if you were as interested in the, in the process like I am, then I would approach the mid-sized family-owned company with this offer. I would approach them with this offer and ask them and ask the family owned company if there is anything the family owned company does better, does better than the Fortune 500. It's going to be a hard. It's going to be a hard sell. It's going to be a hard find. It's going to be a hard buy, even. A hard buy and a hard sell. Why? Because it's going to require you to be more proactive, to take the initiative and approach the family-owned company from a position as if you really do give a fuck about the business, right? If they treated you as an extended part of your family for so long and and, and it's a position that you've been there for a year now and you do like, do you really want to, quote-unquote, sell your soul to this Fortune 500 company, Right? And it might not be a bad thing. Maybe the Fortune 500, like you're, like you're saying, it's a really great job market and it really, it's a really great uh, industry and it really interests you and it's growing and it's booming and you think it could be a game changer. All of that. And a bag of fries, right? Some fucking chips to go. It could be that. And I would say take it. I would say take it. But if you are as interested in the process, in the process of business, of actually doing business and growing business... If, if, if you're if you're just stuck on the job, right? If you're stuck on the job and you just want a new job and progress in your career, bro, it's, it's, this is an obvious choice, an obvious choice, regardless of what troubles it causes, regardless, because it already sounds like you don't need them as a reference and you've only been there one year. <laughs> what fucking job hopping do you have to worry about? So long as you continue to develop yourself, so long as you continue to develop yourself, your skills, your professional uh, uh, knowledge and, and know-how, your expertise, you will go far in the Fortune 500. Alternatively, you could also go far with the mid-size family-owned, but that's really only if you care about the business, the mid-size family-owned business. Maybe there is something that they do better than the Fortune 500 company. Maybe there is something that, that they do better, and maybe... It's something that you, that overlaps with your personal interests, with your personal and professional interests, and you could find an avenue to pursue there and grow from there. But again, if you if you care about the business process, then I mean it 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 might behoove you to ask and inquire. I mean, it doesn't mean that you should be staying at the midsize anyways, but you should still feel out what options continue to exist or what options remain untapped at the medium size family owned. Because keep in mind, the 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 50 to 60% increase in salary also comes with greater responsibilities. Now it's good that you are self-aware of of what of what uh compensation like the exchange it the exchange in compensation the exchange the value exchange in compensation requires it's good that you identify with that and you're able to recognize that but if you are in a in a medium sized family owned you're getting paid 50% less right but you have less responsibility but you have the now you have this chip you have this 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 flaming chip right here it's a fire chip to play it's a card that you can not pull from your sleeve if you haven't if you haven't already told them, but pretty much a card you can put out on the table and say, this is a key, right? This is a key that the Fortune 500 company identified in me, me possessing a key. Is there a lock? Is there a lock somewhere in this medium-sized family-owned company 
that could use this key. If not, go back to season one, episode one of the Corporate Cowboys podcast, The Skeleton Key. If not, this Fortune 500 company has identified me as being the key, and I'm out. <laughs> Yo, if you like this content, if you like this kind of content, right, please consider subscribing, liking, share with your family and friends. Tell them, hey, uh, are you in need of some professional counseling? Uh, would you like some career counseling? Uh, it may not be legal advice, but it could be a different approach. It could be a, an angle you haven't considered, right? Well, how about you hop on Reddit or what you thought I was, what you thought I was gonna have you send them to me? <laughs> nah, nah. If they want personal rates, okay. Otherwise, they can just go on Reddit. Reddit is a fairly good source. I'm gonna say fairly, not the best. Fairly, it's, it's pretty decent. It's pretty decent, right? It's a pretty decent source to get opinions on. Uh, and we haven't even started. So let's, uh, we've got 10 minutes left in this consultation because th th this is a mock consultation and I'm constantly improving the process and I feel like giving free consultations this way is a, a better return on investment than marketing even. I mean, I feel if folks stumble across videos like these, which I myself haven't found, then they could in real time reach out to me with a follow-up question on the video. Go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Throw it down in the comments. Do you have follow-up questions to this? I will try to answer them either via comments or in a follow-up video. If not, continue following because these, if not, stay tuned because these scenarios, these circumstances are likely to have some overlap as far as a corporate approach as far as how you should approach corporate, how you should approach corporate given your personal circumstances. Now, what, what I mentioned, like that, that whole approach of whether or not liking the process, being interested in the process of growing business or just taking your key and running with it, that is honestly the takeaway from this video. So if you want to note something down, write something down, it's, it's whether you like the business process versus you just want to be a key to be used, right? Because it, it doesn't sound like this person is negotiating their salary. It sounds like the offer's been made, 50 to 60% more, more responsibilities, boom. So do you sign or no, right? The negotiating is more than likely going to happen up here. It's going to be a little bit more drawn out. It's going to require a little bit more time and attention and effort because it's family owned. It's mid-sized. So depending on what your chain of command looks like, what, what, your, what your communication channels look like, whether or not they have some system in place to be able to address your concerns, to be able to address your, your circumstance, it might require a little bit more time, a little bit more attention, something that the Fortune 500 company obviously has grown efficient at doing. That's why they just came to you with the number. They must already have an algorithm like, yeah, pitch them this, pitch them this figure and see if they sign. They could probably go higher. They could probably, they could probably go higher. But then you have to negotiate. You have to be the, you have to become, you have to become the, 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 the skeleton key. You have to become the key that they truly want. You have to become ever the ever-changing key because really what they did was take a snapshot of you interview you, recruit you for what they had seen at the time. But if you approach them, you know, from, if, if you approach them, take the ball that they've thrown at you and, and on your side of the court, dribble it around, show them you can shoot, show them you're a shooter, you might be able to negotiate a little bit more. But again, that's whether or not you want to. First comment here says, you could take the offer to your current manager Explain you love the company and role you are in, but 50% raise in pay cannot be ignored. Yeah, man, money talks. Explain you wanted to give them a chance to improve your package to compete, not beat. It sounds like you have good people around you, and that is actually pretty important. Yes, a great point, a great point. You don't want this mid-sized firm, you don't want to put the mid-sized family-owned firm in a position to have to... Uh, overpay, overpay for your services if you aren't doing what you would be doing in the Fortune 500, which is having more responsibilities, having more obligations, more duties, right? Being promoted after one year looks awesome on a CV too, whereas moving roles 
less so. So you could ask for a 20% and a promotion title to a senior account manager or a similar. Just ideas as an example. Uh, that last piece, this last, uh, these last two sentences, while they are good in the short term, it's probably shitty in the long run if this title to a senior account manager wasn't, uh, wasn't actually backed by anything, anything of substance, if that makes sense, which is why I said if you actually love the process of business, if you love the business process, you would go to them with, uh, with that question. What does the, f- the firm do that is better than the Fortune 500? What is the firm's, well, what is the mid-sized firm's actual strengths and advantages in the market that you're in, 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 in the chemical industry that you're in, that you find yourself in? And then see if that strength overlaps with your interest at all. Because at the end of the day, even if you approach it in a very logical manner and, and, and just trying to inform yourself and inquire about your options, you might still end up walking away. You want to do so in a very professional, very diplomatic fashion. You, you don't want to just burn bridges on the way out. Like, oh, well, well, well what does the mid-sized firm do? That I mean, how, how, could, how could it compete with this Fortune 500? They're paying me more. They, they, they provide more services. Maybe there is, you know, something that the, that the mid-size does that is just niche and spectacular that you could, you could yourself capitalize on. But, you know asking for 20% and a promotion, uh, you, you want to f- ask what the promotion would entail, whether or not there'd be more responsibilities there. And that's always negotiable as well. It says here, then again, I get a job every six to 12 months and it's never been a problem. So that, that bit isn't always an issue in my opinion and more money is more money. Anyway, there's no right answer, just some musings on options. It's a nice problem to have, I reckon, so congrats. Yeah, getting a new job every six to twelve months isn't uh, um, isn't like a novelty. It, it's not like a novel idea. If you're an independent contractor jumping from project to project, just knocking projects out the fucking park back to back, you could run through like four or five projects in a year if you're really productive. You could I, personally, you could have multiple clients in a year and have them all be a success. Or I mean, you know, have them all be works in progress because uh, there are times when they're more personal issues than there are professional issues and they might have to be referred out if they're a if if they're outside of my like if they're like on the border of something psychiatric psychological i'm that's not in my that's not in my uh bailiwick right that that's not in my wheelhouse i don't i don't deal with with those uh particular issues but hey i could refer you out to somebody that i know another associate corporate cowboy uh, then the OP says here, they definitely won't increase my wage by that much, but taking they don't, it justifies the decision to leave only more. Wait, so they won't even increase it 20%? Or what were they saying 50%? You see, it, it doesn't say here. And then somebody else actually wants to know, curiously, uh, generally curious what industry you're in that job hopping and they're they're replying to the first comments or that job hopping every six to 12 months isn't seen as a red flag. And the person re- replies with, yeah, project management, fucking duh, job management. <laughs> All right, uh, another comment to the original poster saying, if you think you'll be happy there, take it. And they're saying happy there, like as in the Fortune 500 company. If you think you'll be happy at the Fortune 500, take that shit. They say, my husband found them found himself in a similar position three co-workers left in quick succession for bigger pay elsewhere which opened up doors for him to move up within the company which he really liked and felt loyal to he and his boss had some good conversations about building his career in the restructuring that's fucking clutch when you see that shit happen and somebody actually takes the initiative this, this husband of theirs is, was a corporate fucking cowboy to have some conversations, sincere conversations about the future of not only the company, but his future within the company. Damn, it says, then my husband himself got recruited by a friend to a new company for like 50% more pay. He felt so guilty, it says, telling his boss that he had an offer, knowing his old company could never match it, worried he was leaving them in the lurch as the fourth guy to leave. 
But the boss surprised them by saying that he understood and to put out of his mind that he was lost number four. And here in quotes it says, there is nothing you could have done about the timing to be the first or fourth person out the door. That boss sounds like a fucking G. Sounds like a fucking top boss. Knows how to take a loss, right? Knows how to take a loss and do it moving. And even candidly said, as your boss, uh, this, this uh, commenter says, and even said candidly, candidly, as your boss, I am not sorry to see you go, but as your friend from working together all of these years, you would be an idiot not to take the money if you like the company. Damn, what a fucking gangster with that shit. And I've had bosses in that position. I've had to play the boss too, having to take the loss and losing some good people. Losing some, losing some good people. And it's not because of compensation, but because of opportunity. If it isn't within my network, if it isn't within my reach to be able to provide that opportunity, we can't provide all the opportunity. Yes, every opportunity is six degrees away, six degrees of separation away. But if I'm in like within the first three to four, I find myself to be successful, right? Five and six, you got to be a fucking ace. You got to be an ace. You, you, have to, you have to hone and continually be working on that skeleton key, like I'm saying. You have to. You have to. And yeah, there's been moments, moments in life where the fifth and the sixth just happen to 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 to, to work. Just just happen to <laughs> what's the what's the term I'm I'm looking for? Just happen to uh, appear. Is it apparate like an apparition? It, it it just fucking comes into fruition and it's so smooth. It's like a it's like a like a sanded down and polished pick that just glides into the lock, and you, and you and you're just picking pins and having fun with the shit. And the whole time, it's a, it's a skeleton key. You have the skeleton key, and, and you're, you're the fifth and the sixth degree of separation becomes like as if it were the first. And and I mean, I love it. I love it. All to say, it says here the comments are people understand. It's not egregious job hopping if you can say that you followed a bigger salary. Plus, you could stay at that job for multiple years and then your resume won't look job hoppy at all. You see? So they could still they still have the chance, the option to create some history with this Fortune 500. If they put in good work, if they know how to assert themselves, if they know how to value, negotiate their position as an asset, you know, take on that mindset of a corporate cowboy, not just an employee, right? If they learn to take on those values, then easy. I mean, they the, the Fortune 500 would refuse to let them go. They, they'd be like, no, we'll give you 50% more and cut your responsibilities down so you don't leave. If you do something well enough, you will get paid. You will get paid. You do something well enough and you're able to present, promote, pitch, hustle, that shit. You will get paid. Plus, you could stay at that job multiple years and your resume won't look job hoppy. And there's nothing you could do. And there's nothing you could have done about the timing. Being in the middle of understaffed projects. That shit, yeah. I mean, that's just ongoing. It sounds like an ongoing problem. That sounds, yeah, it sounds, it says that sounds like a them problem, not a you problem. That do what you can to smooth the relationships before you leave because for all you know, one of those connections could be useful to a job down the line. Yes, yes. Leave, leave professionally. Depart professionally. Be a diplomat. Be a fucking diplomat. But give yourself some peace about it too, right? So you want to leave and you want to keep any professional network with this family-owned operation because again, again, this family-owned operation might have something in, in its repertoire that it's, it's, it's known for, it might have a, a hidden strength, it might have some, some advantage to it, being family-owned, being mid-sized, it might be more agile, more flexible, it, 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 might, be, uh, it, it might be better adaptive, faster to, to change and transform and turn on a dime even than a Fortune 500 company, right? Because Fortune 500s tend to be fucking whales, right? So th this, this family-owned doesn't mean that you're just writing them off. When you leave, you're done with them forever. No, no, not at all. Like, if, if anything, the family-owned company, if they aren't petty, right? Because sometimes family-owned means it's just full of dumpster fires. If they aren't petty, if they are professional and they appreciate you for the professional you are, 
they're actually going to be on board. They're, they're going to push you out the door and keep you in their network. Why? Because now you've got the connect and they recognize you have become the key. I would only caution against taking the job if you think that quote unquote colder atmosphere seems sufficiently off putting that it's giving you pause. Work life balance, happy coworkers, a warm environment, etc., does matter. Professional, fine. Maybe it'd be nice to work somewhere where people don't take leaving as a knife in the back. Ha. It says your ha in parentheses. But you don't want to follow money to another awful situation. If there's anything you could do to assuage that particular concern, asking to talk to a would-be fellow coworker in the same role, that might be worthwhile. Yeah, so essentially it's saying if uh, you if provided the opportunity to interview with a potential coworker at the Fortune 500 and, and really asking them, asking them what the overall environment is like, what the work-life balance is like, uh, what, what, what kind of um, culture, I guess, the, the organization follows day to day, policies and practices. I mean, those are all good insights to have going in because, I mean, it, it's better to be a tire kicker first than handing over somebody the cash and then be like, oh, but I forgot to check under the hood. Fucking don't be one of those. Don't. Please don't. <laughs> don't. Don't fucking do that shit. Get get your kicks in. Get your kicks in now, right? If the company is recruiting you, it's for a reason. What you ought to be doing is recruiting the company back, right? And I'm talking about the Fortune 500. If the Fortune 500 is headhunting you, you ought to be headhunting the Fortune 500. You ought to know that you're a good fit and not just go on like uh, on, on like this idealistic dream of like, oh, it could open many doors. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, so go ahead and knock on a couple of those doors and, and ask what's behind this one, right? Even as, as you're walking to the door, I'm just following the analogy here. Even as you're wa- I'm following the metaphor, the analogy here, even as you're walking to the door, the manager might say, oh, no, no, don't knock on that one because you're not ready for it yet. Hey, that's enough. That's enough, man, to know that you are that you are worth 50 to 60% more salary-wise, right? I mean, and, and even then, benefits are negotiable. I mean, I don't know what, what it's like out in Northwestern Europe, but I would imagine that it's, uh, it, given the industry and, and given the large margin of, of salary increase, all things are negotiable. All things are negotiable. Uh, two more, two more, and then we're gone. Job hopping is rarely a concern when it's a promotion or a significant pay increase. Job hopping is a problem when your reason is, I just didn't like it. Yeah, that's, that's straight up, straight up. Another one, last one says, do you have an offer yet or are you still interviewing? If you are interviewing, wait to think it, wait to, to think it through after you have an offer. And yeah, prel- yeah, preliminarily, you want to wait till you have something in writing. And here, OP. Ooh, OP. Okay, I like this one. I like this comment because we went in assuming, we went in assuming that an offer was on the table, having been headhunted. Because typically, typically when a, when a company reaches out, it's because they've identified you in the field as having put in good work right? It's having put in good work and they want that talent. They want that skill in their shop. So they'd shoot you an offer. They'd they'd lay out what the responsibility, yeah. If they're laying out what the responsibilities are, they, they, if they're laying out what the responsibilities are and the wage and the rate at which you're going to get paid at, yeah, one would think that an offer was already on the table, but Lo and behold, it says here, not yet. OP says they haven't been given an offer yet, but I've gone through three meetings, which I take it to be interviews. OP sounds like a rook. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> a, a newbie. Sorry, not a... I mean, a rook is like a newbie. Sounds fucking fresh. He sounds like he's a, a greenhorn. Like, he, like, he, like he's not... Like they are not familiar with the field, right? So they're saying not yet, but I've gone through three meetings, which are interviews, of which the last one was an informal meeting with the potential future colleagues. Wage has been openly discussed and agreed upon. In the end, the sales manager basically said that this was the last step and the decision had been taken, that I would receive, 
what? Basically said that, basically said this was the last step and the decision had been taken. What decision had been taken? That I would receive an offer by the end of this week. Also putting a bit of pressure, honestly. Okay, I, I get it. It's because when you're on Reddit, I guess you type like a fucking retard. Of, co- <laughs> of course, I'm not taking any action before having the offer in my hands. I take that back because it's Northwest Europe. Maybe, you know, there's a little language barrier. Maybe they're not so good with grammatics, right? I get it. I fucking get it. So if wage has been discussed and there's no offer in writing yet, yeah, yeah. And and the follow-up to that is that, yes, do nothing until you have the actual offer letter. After that, take it and congrats. It says take it and congrats. And the next one here just really quickly says 60% is too big to turn down, honestly. Yada, 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 yada. Got to look out. If it's a very strong reason not to take the other position, go for it. If there is a very strong position not to take the other position, if there is a very, very strong reason not to take the other position, go for it. Okay, that's misworded, but essentially it's saying other than there not being a very strong position, a very strong reason to not pursue the Fortune 500, to take it, but you want to wait for that offer in writing first. Still, it does not detract, it does not detract from the potential that this engineer has in their hands, given that they've already been approached by a recruiter. I hope the engineer took notes on what the recruiter from the Fortune 500 company was identifying them for, and then take those strengths as um, not bargaining chips so much, but as a form of leverage, as, as an identifiable skill set that is marketable. Find if the mid-size family-owned company can, uh, can compete, can compete as far as career development. Not so much wage, right? But as far as maybe providing that 20% bump that we heard, with some form of promotion and enhancing or, or, or developing um, their, their area um, in, in the industry. So to continue to develop themselves professionally for the sake of the company, for the sake of the business. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. Even then, when you have the offer, I mean, you still could... I mean, w- without without rocking the boat too much, because we're not given any information on on whether or not um, this this quote unquote knife in the back, because they say they feel like it'd be a knife in the back, but if nobody's actually come out of the woodwork and say like, oh, this is betrayal, then I, I feel like they might appreciate the opportunity that you've been given and the opportunity that you have before you to take advantage of, if they are professionals, and uh, worst comes the worst. Worst comes the worst, you're at a new position, getting paid more, doing more. Um, you've got a new a new title for your resume, and and you still got that network behind you at the family uh, owned midsize, because they'll always be part of your professional network. I mean, if you keep them, don't burn that bridge down. Obviously, the skeleton key works both ways. The skeleton key works for. Should work for all locks it's been in, right? You don't want to start breaking teeth off of your skeleton key just because, you know, you, you don't know how to handle inter- interpersonal and professional interactions. <laughs> that about wraps it up for this episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that good jazz. You could pass this on to your friends and family. Tell them that corporate loves them. And um, subscribe to the Patreon, get exclusive content. You can shoot a donation at us, keep this operation off for profit. It goes towards business expenses, legal fees, guns, ammo, all that good stuff. Um, there's a Venmo floating around, a PayPal, a cash app. Thank you very much.